Okay, uh, this is how I take care of clipping or potential clipping issues when uh, calibrating. So uh, you would have, say, a receiver, a receiver. You would have, in my case, a mini DSP uh, for calibration of the sub. And then you would have the sub itself. So this is, uh, I mean, it's not specific to the subwoofer channel, but the subwoofer channel in, say, a Denon receiver is going to be the first thing that clips bef at, uh, before refer it will clip before reference. So one example of this is uh, Tenet, the movie by Christopher Nolan. At negative six on my old receiver, the Denon X6500H, that would clip at negative six. It would not clip at negative eight, ever. So, I mean, one way of looking at that, you could say, is if you used a negative eight dB cut on the subwoofer channel, excuse me, at, um, at zero dB reference, you would never clip. Because if you're not clipping at negative eight and you are clipping at six, lower that channel by negative eight and you aren't clipping. So that was um, what I was essentially doing before is I was just being very safe and setting the receiver to negative 10 um, on the channel itself. The biggest issue with that, not from my perspective, um, I was just uh, other people have contacted me and said this, this is actually a problem is some some subs um, are on auto turn on and if the signal level isn't loud enough the subs just won't turn on so you know that is a problem by going too low like the thing is what you got to think about is how loud do you actually listen to movies and what you've almost got to work out where this clipping point is um, for me, I was listening to movies at negative eight and I wasn't actually clipping. So, um, but I, I want to be safe. So this is what I did. So, um, and even back then I was using like posit heavy positive gains on the mini DSP. So this is, a this is the mini DSP. Um, I'm just going to use template uh, for now and I'll load up my existing, uh, calibration. So this import. This is my new one. The new one uses boosts of only uh, plus six. So in REW, you just set the boost limit to six. And as you can see, I never go above six. I'm using negative EQ, but some of the boosts and gains here are only going to six. So again, this you, you keep this really simple. So you load up Odyssey here. Just to show you, uh, it's that one, yeah. So this is a little faded because I'm not actually connected to the receiver. My subwoofer channel here is set to negative 6.5. So what, it, what this is doing is essentially countering all of this. Any boosts that you put in, let's say you set yours to plus 8, then I would set this to negative 8. You just, you have to take care of this in, in that volume way. Where do you get the volume back? You get the volume back in the sub itself. You now have to raise the volume of the sub to match the levels of the rest of the system. So in doing that, you uh, take care of all of the digital clipping in these systems and you put the volume back here. I found that that is the best way to deal with this. There is one potential issue with this and that is uh, as with all amplifiers including the amplifiers in receivers is um, I want you to think about this if you your receiver if you set the volume to um, what would be off <laughs> I was gonna say zero but zero in my way of thinking is actually reference just turn the volume all the way down is what I mean to all the way down Go to a speaker and do you hear any hissing or anything like that? You're, you're essentially trying to hear the noise floor of the signal itself. But if you set your receiver to uh, reference, which is zero dB, you can hear, I can go to all of my speakers and I can hear hissing. There is hissing there. 
So it's raising the noise floor of the actual device itself by increasing the volume. Now, even at reference on my receiver, if I sit in my seat, can I hear hissing? No, you can't hear. You actually have to go up to the speaker to hear it. So, but it is there. Now this exists as well in the sub, and in some cases it can be worse. Um, I've heard some stories about um, my subs. Um, what are they? Uh, I'm trying to think what they are. I'll think in a minute. Oh, I've just had a brain fart on that one. Um, but my subs, my I bought two of them, monolith. I bought two of them. One of them was perfect, and the other one at the same volume, I could hear it hissing. Um, and I'm like, that's just uh, that's not right. I, I, I try not to I try not to return things if like I really just don't need to. But this was a case where this sub was simply playing paying, uh, playing too much sound and hiss and it, I could hear it in, in silent moments and I'm like that this is just not good so I returned it they sent out a new one the second one um, before I even brought it upstairs I checked the volume downstairs is there any hiss there was none so not that it is a is a big problem but it could be on some amps that especially on the subs is that if you turn the gain up too much can you actually hear the sub itself? So I calibrated this way with negative, I actually calibrated with negative eight just to make sure I had enough volume in on the, on the subs themselves. Um, I went near field because I don't have an app to control volume uh, with these, with the monoliths. Unfortunate, but it makes the subs so much cheaper. So I want to get in there and touch things anyway, so I don't care about me doing the volume and stuff like that. If I had to calibrate somebody else's system remotely and deal with volume, oh, that'd be that'd be a pain. So it, you know, that type of calibration is so much better when somebody has a phone app because I can just tell them, hey, raise the raise both subs by plus two. You know, it's just it's so much easier. But in my own house. I don't mind doing that because, um, well, I like doing it, so. But it took me a couple of calibrations to get the sub volume right. Once the sub volume was right, it allowed me to essentially put the put a negative 6.5 gain on my receiver itself. That takes, of, that takes care of all of the clipping problems because I listened to Christopher Nolan at negative 8. Christopher Nolan's movies, <laughs> like Tenor, at negative eight. I am so far away at this point. Let's say, well, negative six would put you up to negative two, right? And even that wouldn't be clipping because at zero, at negative eight, it wasn't clipping. So I, 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 there's no way I would listen to a Christopher Nolan movie that loud. So again, it's really, it's taking care of your own potential clipping, however volume you listen to this. Now, if you, if you, if you listen to Christopher Nolan at reference, Tenet, oh, how loud, I mean, that would be, that would almost be painful to listen to his movies at that, that volume. But, um, I think I would say I would de definitely 100% negative eight would not make your Denon clip because it didn't on my X6500H because negative eight wasn't clipping that's that means if I put negative eight here and got the volume levels all matched again that at zero they wouldn't clip either so this is uh again I just keep this really simple Whatever I boost by is whatever I negate by. That's it. That's all I all I do. And I'm I listen to movies loud, but I don't I, I'm not listening to movies at reference with a Christopher Nolan movie. And I'm I, I'm using Christopher Nolan's volume of movies as my reference of what movies should be mixed at. If you get a Disney movie, you know, I've listened to Disney movies at plus two. That's two dB away uh, above reference before. And to, 
that's to me why uh, you know reference gets thrown around a lot um, especially on the internet but I don't know what it means like to me I thought reference meant that movies were mixed at 85 dB and the gain of the actual movies itself was the same it actually matched now people may be mixing at 85 dB in the studio but the uh, the gain on the things that they're mixing is not the same as each other if it was then a disney movie would be mixed at the same volume level as christopher nolan as uh dennis villeneuve and they're not they're not mixed at the same level when i watch the batman i listen to that at negative four yeah negative four and negative four is the same volume as christopher nolan's negative eight so there's a four db difference in their movies Dune 1 has a difference, I think it's 2 or 3 dB on that one, compared to the second one. The second one, the voices are so much louder than the first one. So, th the way they're mixing these and, you know, with the discussion of actually what reference is, I just, for me, there's no point in getting involved in it. So I, I just, what is my reference? What is my reference volume for a Christopher Nolan movie, which is negative eight, and I never clip. You can tell when you're clipping because you can hear it. It sounds, um, it doesn't sound, it doesn't just doesn't sound analog. Um, it doesn't sound, it sounds hard. Um, you've reached your peak. You, you, there's just a point. It doesn't actually sound like bass anymore. You, you, sh you should know when it happens because your bass just doesn't sound smooth anymore. It has the, all that smoothness is gone. All that textured bass detail is gone. So, but yeah. I uh, hope this helps um, people that uh, don't really know what to do here. And um, now if you are listening to movies at True Reference, at Christopher Nolan's reference, <sighs> yeah, well, to be honest, even again, if you even if you had a Denon, negative eight, negative, you would have to do negative eight. You couldn't. I don't think you could even do negative six. I think you would clip by two dB. So, um, but again, you get your volume back in your subs. More more subs you have if you have eighteen subs, you know, uh, like some people on YouTube I've seen, <laughs> eighteen subs. You can just get your volume back in your subs. And that is, the, in my opinion, the best way to deal with this clipping, this digital problem here with these. You can just get it back on your subs. The more subs you have, the lower your noise floor will be on your subs. So because the volume of each sub is going to go down because you gain 60, roughly 6 dB for every sub. So... Um, it, that's one reason why it's definitely best to have as many subs as you can. Uh, you're lowering that noise floor. But again, I, I can sit in my seat, turn my system up to reference, and you cannot hear the subs, right? Because uh, well, my, new, my new subs, uh, they don't have this like hum and buzz issue. Now, if I put my ear to it, sure, you can hear them, right? That, I think that's pretty normal to have that problem. But for me, as long as it doesn't interfere with my the noise floor of what I'm hearing in the sea, which it doesn't, they're, they're way far away from that, um, then for me there's no problem in increasing the volume on the sub to take care of this problem. So, yeah, let me know what you, what you do. Um, is this the simplest way? Whatever you boost by? What it is, whatever you negate by. That's just simple for me. Um, around 6 dB works works best. And I don't think you need to be boosting more than 6 dB either in the sub. So, I, I have. Um, but this is the best EQ for my subs that I've, I've got. And it sounds, to me, it sounds smoother. It sounds smoother. It sounds, it just sounds incredible. And again, taking care of this, any potential clipping issue 
do it in the receiver slash processor first. Don't do it. Don't do it in this. Uh, don't do it in the mini DSP. Don't. I wouldn't use negative or positive gains here at all. Now there is one time I've used negative uh, here. Is one of my subs is ever so slightly louder than the other, and it's OC. It's to the point of OCD, where one is 0.4 and the other one was 0.3. So just putting this in, just putting that in, took care of the volume differences of both subs near field. They're, they're, now, uh, they're now kicking out exactly the same volume. And it, that's all it took. Then I did the EQ after that. And it, yeah, that's just for me how it worked out. Uh, yeah, so yeah, tell me, what, uh, tell me what you do and I hope this helps somebody. So thanks for watching. Bye.